When my producers showed me this creature, I thought, wow, that looks really interesting. Now that I'm here, oof, I'm terrified to even taste this. Around the world, there's nothing too unusual about eating a standard fish. Mm, super fresh, super yummy. But What's this? some underwater ocean species are so bizarre, oh. so shocking, oh it's amazing anyone thought to stick them in their mouth. Oh, look at this one's lips. These are the most kissable fish I've ever seen. Today, we're taking on seafood you won't find at your local Red Lobster. This is not a species native to Vietnam. Rare specimens, only reserved for the most curious. It's got these weird eye holes. Like, well, what are we eating here? And most brave seafood lovers. There we go. <laughs> so, is this ocean meat a delicious, well-kept secret? Are there any special, you know, health benefits to eating this? <laughs> or is there a reason this food hasn't gone mainstream? You guys have heard of a trust fall? This is a trust bite. Let's find out now. When you're on Fuok Island at sunrise, while the ocean waters are still calm, you know there's one place getting busy. Welcome to the island's biggest port. Wholesalers from smaller fish markets, buyers, distributors, everyone is waiting to get their first look at today's catch. And when you're surrounded by this much ocean, you'll rarely be disappointed. This morning, we've come to Antui Fish Market. Here you can see hundreds of fishing boats, and throughout the morning, fishermen are coming in at different times, dropping off what they've caught during the last day or the last few days. Ah, right behind me, you see this is a fish species. Looks good. This morning, I'm on the search for something I haven't seen before. I don't know if I'm gonna have any luck, but let's find out. Pua is located on rich fishing grounds, or uh, fishing waters, I guess. In 2020, seafood distribution here increased to 750,000 tons. Now that is a lot of fish sticks. What a great find already. My man here is weighing all this gar. Gar is one of my favorite fish because of the name. It's like the sound a pirate makes. Gar. Cool. Would you look at that bizarre looking mouth? It's got just like super thin, razory teeth and a very narrow mouth. Some of these will be eaten fresh, but a lot of these are gonna be dried out. The seafood industry brings profit and job opportunities to the local people. You'll find a variety of fish, shellfish, sea urchins, shrimpies, mantis shrimps, crabs, and they're especially known for their anchovies. The main ingredient in Vietnam's most famous condiment, fish sauce. Right here, this boat has just pulled into the port and it's full of anchovies. Right now, they're offloading it over to here. They pour it into these containers. They throw some ice on it. They put it in the truck. Somewhere on this island, there's huge, big pots full of fermenting fish. So these fish probably won't be consumed for another year because it takes a long time to get salted and fermented. If you don't want to wait a year for these guys to turn into a sauce, well, just lay them in the sun let them dry, and soon they'll be ready to eat. So all this fish is going to be dried out, fried, and then used to top certain dishes. Very tasty. Within hours, the seafood goes from boats to trucks to smaller local markets. Not too far from the port, we've stumbled upon this place, a very unique, tiny, hole-in-the-wall cellar of many types of seafood. Look back there, guys. It's a Vietnamese puffer fish. They claim it's not poisonous, and that is how you die, by thinking it's not poisonous. I'm not so sure about that, so we're not gonna eat that, but take a look at this. Giant stingray, 10 kilograms, that's over 22 pounds. No, that's exactly 22 pounds. Stingrays are often found in coastal, tropical, and subtropical marine waters throughout the world. There are 220 different species. There's no doubt the stingray, as part of nature, is beautiful. But as part of dinner, well, they're confusing. It's got spikes on its back. It's very bony in the center. It's got a big whippy tail, weird eye holes. Like, what are we eating here? So hopefully at the next location, we can really finally see how to break down a stingray and what are the most prized parts. Three, two, one, go. We are in the kitchen right now with Chef Bin. Hello, Chef. Uh, xin chào. Oh, you're wearing, let's do one of these. Boom. 
We're at Phung Hoang Restaurant, serving more than 80 different dishes, using all kinds of local seafood, including stingray. Look at that. It's freaking huge. We were quoted as it being about 10 kilograms. It turns out it's 16. That means it's over 35 pounds. Have you ever seen a stingray this big? That's something I've heard a lot <laughs> in my life. Have you ever seen one this big? Uh, bigger, actually. Oh. All right. Well, I was excited. You ruined it. <laughs> Here's how a stingray body breaks down. On top, protruding eyes and spiracles, or the openings through which they take in water to breathe. First, we got to give it a flip. Below deck, the gills, nostrils, mouth, and... What's that? Other important parts. I wonder if we eat that. Okay. The breaking down process has begun, and he makes his first incision. Like a doctor at the Mayo Clinic, working with precision, using the right tools for the job. Oh, I felt that in my chest. <laughs> Under that smooth skin is a treasure chest. Oh, that's huge. At least for the locals. That is a freaking massive liver on this thing. Cool. If I'm honest, I did try liver in Vung Tao. It was probably the top three worst things I've ever eaten. It's like all the worst flavors combined. Fishy, bile, it's like acid. I oh love these flavors. God. I need a uh... little... But it turns out to be the most valued part of this creature. So maybe I'll give it another shot. Let's see. The other organs are discarded. All this is going to smell bad, powerfully, of ammonia. We don't want it. Oh, there's a lot of splattering at this point. Stingrays are cartilaginous fish that are actually closely related to sharks. Just, yeah. yeah. This is how people have relationships now in the USA with COVID-19. Their skeleton is made out of cartilage rather than bone. So when we look inside, all the hard to eat parts are just right here in the center. As we get out towards the wings, it's all the meat. The wing has this thick piece of cartilage that goes all the way through the very center of it, kind of like a pig ear. But on either side of that cartilage, it's just soft, juicy, delicious white meat. So this is just half the stingray. We have a bunch of these different fillets, some body parts with more bones, and then a lot of wing with a ton of meat on it. Sir, I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> Grossest handshake ever. <laughs> the chef serves up stingray two ways. First, steamed stingray with lemongrass and turmeric. The most bony part of the stingray actually can be eaten because it's all cartilage. This is completely interwoven with a strange alien-like skeletal structure. There's bits of meat and bone everywhere. The body gets marinated with MSG, pepper, fish sauce, oyster sauce, turmeric, galangal, lemongrass, onion, cooking oil, fermented rice, and cashew nut oil. That gets a steam for 25 minutes. I think the chef felt compelled to give me such a large amount since we went to the market and bought a 35 pound stingray. He'd feel stingy if he just gave me this little like piece. On the side, a dipping sauce made of fish sauce, chilies, shallots, peppercorns, and my favorite, steamed stingray liver. I need like a bottle of Listerine next to me or a Jack Daniels or a revolver <laughs> just to end it all. Here's what's great about the liver. It's just a goo. Smelling it is like looking down before bungee jumping. Don't do it. Just go. One, two, three. So again, I don't blame the chef. I blame the stingray, you little bastard. To me, it's very unpleasant. It's so soft, fatty, and oily. It coats your mouth with this earthy, bile-y type of flavor. But let's give it a mix. We will come back to that in a bit. Here, something I'm much more excited for. Stingray wing. Let's try it out. Mmm, that's really good. It's quite juicy. It's very soft. A little bit bland. So give it a little bit of a dip. I guess. You guys have heard of a trust fall. This is a trust bite. I'm gonna fall back and the chef's arms are gonna catch me. Let's go for it. You know what? That's pretty good. The liver directly is very intense, but that added the little bit of depth this dish needed. I gotta say, that's pretty decent. Short for decent. Mm. Some bites are juicy, but some are much more oily, fatty, and pretty intense. Overall, Steamed stingray, big success. Next, grilled stingray on banana leaves. The cooking technique, it matters. It's gonna change the quality of the protein and the texture especially. The stingray steak is marinated in a blend of sugar, chili sauce, cashew nut oil, pepper, turmeric, shallots, lemongrass, and chili. This one looks pretty good. I think I just take this whole thing. 
vroom, it's wrapped in banana leaves and a layer of aluminum foil that hits the grill for 25 minutes. Nice, clean, vibrant on the inside. Oh, I think I can just grab the cartilage and pull this whole thing out. Oh, look at that. We're left with this huge amount of meat. Cheers. Overall, the meat is actually a little bit mushy, almost like you had some kind of insanely soft pulled pork. Mm -hmm. In the past, I've had Stingray Hot Pot. I really like what boiling it does to the meat because it keeps some bouncy texture. This is good too. The chef did a great job of removing any type of fishy. It's a very clean taste. All the flavors are there. Very nice. From here, we're gonna really level up. This is a rare creature that is not often eaten. We're gonna try it out next after this commercial break. Ad. We're at Bean High Restaurant, open for the last 21 years, offering all kinds of seafood. I want this aquarium in my house. This is a delicious looking octopus. From the typical. What is that? To extremely rare deep sea creatures. What we're actually here for is this ray. Oh, he swam right into my trap. Come here, buddy. All right, there he is. This is not a species native to Vietnam. This is the spotted ribbon tail ray. Found in the tropical Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, it's not difficult to see how the blue spotted ribbon tail ray got its name. And once you pull it out of the depths of the aquarium, you can see these really brilliant bright blue dots on its back. The ribbon tail stingray has a similar body shape to the last stingray we tried, but with one standout difference. The feeling of its wings are much more like thin and flexible. So evidently, this is what we're about to eat. I feel a little bad because it's just a, a beautiful creature, but um, you know, I'm also hungry, so. Did you name this one? Was it named Luke or anything? The method of breaking it down, processing, very straightforward, roughly cutting along the bones, removing the gills, and keeping everything else. This smaller species doesn't have a layer of hard cartilage running through the wings that help it keep its shape. The result, graceful, fluttering wings that happen to contain less meat. Today, she's also going to be using the organs inside for a hot pot. Is there any big advantage to eating this? She says no, absolutely no advantage. First up, frying. This could be good, maybe like fish and chips. The meat part is given a massage with lemongrass and turmeric. And finally, deep fried for 10 minutes. Okay, this is nothing like fish and chips, but maybe it'll be even better. Boom. Right here, this is our final meal of the day. This is the wing of the ray. The skin has kind of curdled up and you can no longer see the spots. Mm, smells super heavy and oily. That's almost like some fried chicken. Very heavy, very oily, but no real fishy taste to it. The skin itself has become quite gooey, sticky. Mmm. So all the pieces are roughly the same. The big difference between this one and the other species is there's no cartilage in the middle. That's why when you see this creature and it's alive, the wings are especially ripply. This is an interesting way to learn about new species. I'm not sure if this is exactly how marine biologists do it, but it's one way to do it. Learn with your mouth. Science. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Remember those organs we held on to? Those get plated up along with other more bony parts of the ray. Add in salt, thorny cilantro, fresh chilies, then serve with a steaming, flavorful broth. I'm gonna go tail section, the liver. <laughs> yes, the headpiece with an eyeball attached. It's like Terminator 2 when he goes into the liquid steel with a thumbs up. I'll be back. No thumbs up though. Give it a little bit of a mix, throw on the lid, and now we wait. I'm gonna start with the piece that I'm most worried about, the liver. If you look at it, it's not like the other stingray where it just becomes a mush and falls apart. This almost resembles like a blood cube. It's okay, it's tolerable. It's, it's actually, it feels like a pork blood cake. If you've ever had a big snail, at the end, it's got kind of like a digestive system there. It tastes just like that. Here's a wing tip. It's very bony. It's kind of just gooey and gelatinous. It's just kind of like boiled fish skin at this point. Oh, okay, here's hot. I found the eggs. It's freaky because they look like unlaid chicken eggs. They're kind of bulbous and yellow. Oh, really soft. A hint of fishiness. That's my favorite piece so far. I've got a piece of the tail here. It's super meaty, some skin still on there, and I kind of healed it off the bone. Let's try that out. Oh, that's very soft. That's the texture that's most like an actual fish. That's really good, though. Whenever trying a new food, especially a new seafood or a new creature, you never really know what to expect. Many times I've been super surprised. Today, 
is just not one of those types. It's interesting because we had two types of rays today. The ray we just had, just meaty, big fat fillets on there. This guy, it's smaller, the textures are weird, it's really gooey, soft. So a lot of textures I wasn't expecting and some intense flavors too. Plus it sucks that it's endangered. I mean, I thought we're eating an endangered animal. I thought it would taste good. Just kidding. Merch alert. This is for all you head to tail adventurous eaters. Always down for trying something new. No waste, more taste. Only available to the end of March. I'm told that since it was a full moon last night, that means there's fewer fish this morning. Also, that means maybe a werewolf ate some of the fish too. That's also possible. These anchovies are gonna be used for a special local fish sauce that the folks love in Fuwak. It's a Fuwak fish sauce. If you don't like it, you can Fuwak yourself. <laughs> and it's gonna peel right off of that. What word did I use? Oh God, come on, bring off that. Oh, and it can peel right off of that cartilage. Good. Good words. You can make a pulled fish sandwich if you just had like a pound of mayonnaise and a ciabatta bun. Sorry, I said that again. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Wait, now we have a good blooper again. Can't forget about carrot flour. Try, you try to eat it? This is gonna break my retainer for sure. Can't do it. I can't break my retainer on an island. Is there an orthodontist on this island? I don't think there is. So this is remarkable. This is all uh, kidneys, heart, intestines and stuff. Can I take that home with me? Oh, man. <laughs> No, okay, no, he said no. I want to put it in my hotel fridge at the Marriott's. Have them open it up and discover that. What is this guy into? Ugh. Come on, Jane. No? <laughs> Grossest handshake ever. <laughs> Boom! All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is it for this one. We will see you next time. A peace. Should I jump in? Would that be crazy? I'm going to do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. You ready? I'm gonna do it. 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 And then cut. And then that's where we cut.